Hey there, today we're gonna to be discussing how to stretch out the hips and the knee in the hind end of your dog. So this is really good to understand. Once again, um, before you dive into this, you wanna understand the joint end field of the dog. So I'll link again to a video up above. Um, but not only that, this book is a great reference, like I said in the previous video about the shoulder. Uh, it's just a great way for dog owners to understand uh, the anatomy that they are trying to stretch. And um, just to dive in a little bit more detail so you have a thorough understanding of your dog. Now with the uh, hip joint, it is a ball and socket joint as well. So it's a synovial type joint, has a lot of range of motion in this joint here. Um, and it's really important to um, know if your dog has uh, a sound hip to begin with, and if they don't, always check with whoever their veterinarian is to make sure that stretching is gonna be okay. Cause I've seen some pretty bad hip dysplasias where I wouldn't advise uh, stretching um, and uh, degenerative conditions as well, where I, I wouldn't advise it uh, for the homeowner to, to force it. But in a healthy dog, you can actually get a lot of range of motion in there. And ideally you can do this when the dog is laying down in their non weight bearing. It's just a little bit easier to work with them. So get them nice and tired get them to relax and hopefully uh, Bo here will uh, cooperate because I usually do this with him standing up, but we'll try it today when he's laying down. So the, the, the hip joint, you can feel uh, when you come off of the sacrum here and the pelvis, you'll feel on the back behind his bum, there's something called the ischial tuberosity, which is where the hamstring tendons attach. That's not the hip. You wanna come a little bit more lateral and you're gonna feel a bony prominence there through all the quad musculature uh, and hamstring musculature. So this is the hip joint here and it moves relative to what's called the acetabulum which is the part of the pelvis pelvis that creates the socket. Uh, the femur, the head of the femur is what creates the the uh, ball of the ball and socket joint. So when you stretch out the hip, what you wanna do is you're gonna appreciate this range of motion by straightening out the hip here. You're gonna hit that end range and you're gonna feel the stretch through the front of the thigh. You can see it right through here on bow where it's pulling. Now we're not gonna force that back. We're gonna keep that obviously in plane. There's a lot of range of motion through the hip where, especially if a male, you see how high they can lift their leg to pee. We wanna maintain that as well. But ideally you wanna get this motion here where we straighten it out and then we wanna hold that for about 30 seconds. And we can also stretch it out the other way if you bring the knee up towards the chest or the stifle and then slowly straighten it out. You're gonna get this hamstring uh, stretch through the back there. So ideally if they're, if they're um, Fighting back, don't push through it. And if you feel any clicking or grinding where they're a bit reactive to it, obviously don't push through that as well. The other thing you can do for this is the adductor muscles here, which are the groin muscles. You can do light stretches to open that up as well, but that's a, a pretty sensitive movement for a dog. So if they do have any hip conditions, you might want to avoid that. Now, we also wanna stretch out the stifle. You can keep the hip in a neutral position. Obviously support underneath the stifle. And what you're gonna do here is just extend it nicely and get some movement through there. Now for smaller dogs and even larger dogs for that matter, you might feel some popping in there. Uh, if it's repetitive all the time, and especially if your dog's young, it probably is um, uh, a luxating patella where it's just popping in and out of the groove. The other thing it can be is you gotta be careful about any uh, ligament damage or cruciate ligament damage. So just make sure that the, the knee is feeling good. And if you're worried about anything like that, always remember to have your dog looked at. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and uh, I'll be happy to help. Take care.